Good morning, Aries. Welcome to your daily reading. I hope you're doing well. So we have the sun in Pisces at zero degrees, water sign energy that has to do with fantasy, imagination, creativity. It's ruled by Neptune, and Neptune is in Pisces as well. So strong imagination could be escaping reality um, into a fantasy world, but this is fueling something to do with creativity, spiritual um, pursuits, anything that has to do with spirituality, anything mystical, creative, and then you could turn this into your physical reality because it's connected down to the moon and Mars and Taurus. So you could make something happen here in reality based on something you're inspired from in your, in your subconscious mind. So in your imagination, you think of something that you want to create and bring into the world. Um, and this is about overcoming fear. So if you have a fear of bringing anything into the world, um, letting go and sort of transcending Chiron, um, moving past the wounded self, as it, because it's connecting up to Mercury in retrograde in Aquarius, and then Chiron's connecting over to Gemini. So it has to do with our communication with people and feeling like a wounded warrior. It could be like you're either a victim of other people um, or feeling like other people blame you kind of energy. That's Chiron. So you have to transform and transcend that. Um, that's the lesson with Chiron, to not be a victim. So I feel like here with the moon or the sun in Pisces and the moon in Taurus, you can utilize the water energy to create something beautiful in your life for yourself. Um, and maybe you can share it with the world or share it with other people without the fear that you'd become a victim um, in that process. So transcending Chiron, maybe I should do a video on that. <laughs> because when Chiron moves into a sign, it's there for eight years. So this will be an eight year learning period for Aries to overcome the feelings that you're a victim. You're not a victim of anyone. Um, you could feel like you've been treated unfairly in some way, but you're definitely not a victim. You can take back your power and um, without blaming the world too, because blaming too would be, you know, kind of victim um, energy. But Chiron is here to learn. You can learn from this. So you also have Eris here, which is very powerful um, energy. And Eris can help you to take back your self-esteem and your love life. So we have a lot of Aquarian energy, Mercury retrograde connecting down to Taurus and Mercury retrograde at a positive alignment to Gemini. So there could be some mix-ups in communication, miscommunication that leads to problems or conflicts with people close to you. But it can, like I said, it can be transcended. You don't have to feel like a victim. Um, I would utilize the energy of the sun and Neptune create something beautiful for yourself uh taurus energy mars and taurus you would be you know doing something that's tangible and real so uh, buying a car buying a house getting a haircut um buying some makeup for yourself anything that's tangible that has to do with the physical self um maybe anything to do with pets also could be happening here um, and it's about pleasure because it's connected up to Venus and Venus is the energy of pleasure, happiness, um, everything that makes you feel sensual, like it's good for your senses, all of your senses here. Um, Venus is aligned with Scor or Sagittarius today, the south node in Sagittarius. So spiritual, um, expanding your mind being open to new cultures. So for East Asia and Pacific uh, West Coast United States, we have the Vedic. And today we have Sun in rising Aquarius, Sun in still in Aquarius, the Moon in Aries, and Mars in Aries. Very emotional, very straightforward 
could be assertive or aggressive. Mercury is in Capricorn retrograde. So there could be some mix-ups in communication that have to do with fear. Um, and the anger that comes out of that with the moon in Aries and Mars in Aries, the personal, taking things personally. So getting upset, taking something personally is Aries energy because it has to do with you. So you feel like, well, if this person doesn't talk to me or doesn't want to talk to me, it must be me, so therefore I'm mad. Um, but no, you, I don't think it's that at all. Um, Venus here in Capricorn. Um, commitments to other people. Uh, being personally responsible for your choices in love, I feel. Um, you're not just a bystander, like you chose this person or whatever. Um, we have K2 here in uh, uh, Scorpio, and we have Rahu in Taurus. So really wanting nicer things for ourselves to make ourselves feel good, um, but with the South Node in Scorpio, it's like we've already done the soul searching and the soul uh, work. So there could be a lot of focus on tangible goods, like new cars, new houses. Um, I even said plastic surgery. Anything that's like physical and tangible could be on your mind. Um, but with Mars and the Moon in Aries, I wouldn't take action until you have at least Mars move into uh, Taurus um, for Asia Pacific probably near the end or mid-March, so I'd wait. So, Pluto is still here in Capricorn. There's still a breakdown, a destruction of an old cycle and a real rebuild of a new cycle that would be something about your personal reputation and your a structure in your life. So 2021 was supposed to be the female energy, the empowered woman. And maybe that's what Mars and Aries with the moon and Aries is about, the empowered self, um, but with passionate emotions, um, very powerful emotions here. The way you feel could overtake you, your emotions could overcome you, and then you feel like you want to take action because the feelings are so intense. With Uranus in Aries as well, you may feel like just doing something outside the norm. Um, so very um, rebellious, going against society, just doing something on your own. Neptune here in Pisces, no, sorry, Neptune would be in Aquarius. So there's fantasy, there's illusion, um, things are not the way they appear to be in society, um, which is kind of like somebody's putting an idea out there, but it's not real yet. Um, so we have here rising uh, Aquarius energy. But the sun has moved into, well, it says here the sun's still in Aquarius, but it's at zero degrees of Pisces in the tropical. So... Okay, so let's just go ahead and see what the cards are saying for you guys. What do we have coming in? Messages for Aries. Messages for Aries. Messages for Aries. Today is the 18th of February. I can't believe this month has gone by just so fast. Okay, so we have the world card on the bottom. Great success. Achieving great success in something. What do we have here? So we have the moon popping. Uncertainty. 
something that's hidden. So we have here temperance, patience, balance, having tempered emotions, balanced emotions. The water between the two cups is supposed to represent balanced feelings. One foot is on the ground, so feeling grounded. So the moon in Taurus um, could help, but if you have the moon in Aries, Asia Pacific, then you could feel assertive, emotional, aggressive. We have here night of fire, fire in motion, moving. We have here the Mercury or Virgo energy of the hermit. Withdrawing communication into yourself, turning inward to do some soul searching in the recent past. The Hermit is a major arcana. We're actually starting out with three major arcanas. We have something about an illusion. Something is not real. It's hidden. Um, it could also be fear, but with patience. We have bravery here coming in. Seven of Wands. Bravery and movement. We have King of Air coming in. Maybe even cutting out someone out of your life. Or being very strict. Wow, so your energy is the major arcana of fool. So this is about breaking free, having no limitations. Uh, just free, a very carefree attitude. Optimistic, light, carefree. New journey, new beginning. Trusting, too. This is about trusting the universe. Seven of Pentacles is around you. Earth energy that somebody feels like they've invested a lot. Um but they're not getting what they want out of a situation. They could be waiting for you as well. Waiting for you to give to them. Um, two of rods. You're at a crossroads. You're feeling like going in a new direction. Maybe some of you feel like moving to another state. Wow, Empress energy is the final outcome. Venus, material wealth and abundance. Nice clothes, nice hair, nice things. It's symbolic of a great abundance. Um, Two of Cups came out with that. Love and harmony between you and another person. And also the Star card energy. Purifying yourself, having a new beginning, a spiritual purification. The water bearer here, releasing emotions and having a lot of hope for the future. So wishing upon a star too. So what is the Knight of Wands? So we have here the Strength card, self-control, and we have the King of Cups. So there could be a, a fire sign or a water sign coming towards you. It's kind of a resistance. To their energy what is the king of swords why is aries blocking there's a conflict here or a competition what is the seven of wands why is aries being brave okay there's something about a two of pentacles energy trying to juggle people or things or time or money Okay, so what is the Five of Wands? I feel like you just, you're turning your back on the, this conflict. You don't want to be involved in a conflict or a competition. A very competitive environment. There could be somebody who wants to compete with you. Um, somebody who's very emotional. What is the Two of Pentacles? There's a King of Wands. There's two Kings. So this could be like a competition. One person here, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, is here, part of the situation. There's three kings. What is the fool for Aries? What is the fool? Okay, so a new beginning. There's something being offered to you with the Knight of Pentacles. Um, Queen of Cups on the bottom could be new love. King and Queen. What is the Knight of Pentacles here? 
Wow, so this hermit energy from the past over here, it can be an expert, a guru, a prophet, and there's a two of cups with that. Okay, so you're coming up as Empress, Two of Cups, and the Star. What is the Empress? Oh, so there's there could be some kind of person watching you, trying to manifest you, even. What is the Two of Cups? The Nine of Cups. So a wish comes true, a wish is fulfilled. What is the Star? What is the Star? Six of coin, payment, <clears throat> receiving payment, someone's generous towards you. What is the Knight of Pentacles? What is the Knight of Pentacles here? This King of Air. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, we have the judgment, something resurrecting. Could be divine timing. And we have the fool with that. So we have a new beginning. Breaking free. Knight of coin. Brings you in a new offer. What is the knight of wands about? Fire in motion. You could be moving around in a company as well. To a better position. Chariot. Forward movement. Forward momentum. Seven of cups. There's going to be more options. And the Knight of Cups. So you're going to have some kind of new beginning. Or it's not a new... Well, there is a new beginning energy with you, with the Fool. Meaning you have to take a leap of faith. You have to trust the universe. Dropping your baggage and your burdens. Being carefree and light. Something is offered to you. You could take it because we have here nine of cups, six of coin, the star, two of cups. There's more harmony with someone. Let's see what the romance angels have to say because two of cups is here. What is two of cups about for Aries? Why are we getting a two of cups? Very soon. Clearly decide what you want so it comes to you now. Okay. Let's pull a magical spell. So what do we have here for Aries for the magical spells? Joy. Connecting in with your solar plexus energy of joy, happiness, optimism. Joy comes from optimism. If you don't have optimism, if you don't have, be optimistic, you can't have joy. I don't see how you could have any joy if you're just negative all the time about everything. So try to shift your energy to optimism. The Two of Cups again. A relationship grows closer as two people fall in love or a current relationship grows much stronger. A friendship may deepen into a spiritual connection. Mutual respect and understanding exists or will develop. Don't give up on relationships that feel challenging. There's still hope. Okay. During Mercury retrograde, connecting in with Gemini that energy is difficult you could be having a lot of misunderstandings with people and you could say well it's your fault you said that <laughs> fourth chakra archangel raphael healing the heart chakra um you know connecting in with your heart and opening your heart the goal isn't to have a closed heart you want to have your heart open when you close your heart out of fear then and you're closing yourself off from any potential love. The thinking woman, being someone who's a professional, someone who's up in their head a lot. That could be you as well. Wow, envy. Who is the energy of envy? It looks like it could be somebody around you. It's the energy of grass is greener. Somebody thinks you have it better than they do. Um, it shows you just moving on from that energy and not really caring at all. 
all tied up. Somebody feels restricted. It's not you. Second chakra, um, sacral chakra. So that's just the energy of wearing orange to um, getting in touch with your creative self. I have these orange calcite bracelets available on my website. Orange, or you could wear like an orange, orange clothes to sort of connect into the vibe of that. Oh, and a victory. Okay, so overcoming some kind of hard time or hard situation. The, the um, energy of Venus, Empress, at the outcome is very good. It means you will overcome and transcend anything around you and actually have a lot of respect for yourself. So Aries, I'm going to leave it here for you. Thank you for watching your daily and take care.